right, tech conversation right now. Uh, Dr. Juliet Ahimwan, one of the most prominent uh, African women in technology and an instrumental leader in Google's regional growth, did announce earlier this week her departure from the company. She's a respected figure in the tech industry and key player in Google's African initiative. She announced her departure via LinkedIn, stating her intent to take on a broader role within the regional tech landscape. She unveiled plans to collaborate with corporate executives, global investors, African governments, and startup founders to drive growth, excellence, and digital transformation within the African tech ecosystem and the broader business landscape. She joins us now to discuss uh, digital transformation across the African continent. Dr. Ehimwan, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Good morning to you. Good morning, Rutus. Thank you. Good to be here. Thank you for joining us very much. Um, so. It's been uh, what, just a week uh, after a <laughs> stellar 12-year career. Um, how, how do you reflect? Uh, how have you been reflecting in the last four days? Yes, thank you so much. I think, um, one, I'm very grateful for, for the last 12 years and um, the opportunity to contribute in the way that uh, my team and my colleagues and I have been able to in the growth of the tech ecosystem. In the last decade, you'll agree with me that we've seen such a boom in terms of you know, Nigerians and Africans coming online and doing amazing things online. When I started at Google about 12 years ago, uh, we were just, uh, it was a small office of two people. <laughs> And uh, internet, year on year, internet growth was really small and a very small percentage of the population. But you know, if when I look back and reflect, I see you know uh, the the growth, you know, really ac across three areas. One is, you know, in terms of infrastructure, the fact that there's a lot more infrastructure, because that's the starting point, right? For people to, to get online, they need access in terms of connectivity and also devices. And, uh, you know, device prices have been coming down, so more uh, smartphones are, you know, present in the market. And we've also been uh, able to uh, invest in some great projects in the infrastructure space. So I'm very proud of the Equiano submarine cable that we, you know, project that started out last year uh, along the coast of West Africa to South Africa, connecting Africa to Europe. Um, that's uh, one example in the infrastructure place uh, uh, space. In terms of content, we've seen African content coming online in a really big way. You know, uh, if I start with the creative industry, you know that uh, we have a lot of creative talent in terms of music, uh, movies, our uh, Nollywood industry. Indeed. you know and other forms of content well you know a lot of those content uh, the content pieces are being digitized and we have a whole generation of entrepreneurs that are monetizing digital content on platforms like YouTube you know we have over 12,000 you know content partners on YouTube that are monetizing in a big way and that's a great way of really uh, diversifying the economy uh, uh, encouraging exports, exporting our talent and culture, and uh, attracting investment in. And of course, also in the area of capacity building. Yep. Um, it, it's great to see an uh, increase in skill set. We've been uh, active in that space as yes, well, you have. helping to train uh, <laughs> people at scale yeah. with digital skills. We've trained over 6 million people, and uh, also developers, because if you're looking to energize the digital space, you need people with skills that can build applications and solutions. And so we've also invested in training 100,000 developers with in-depth skills around building mobile apps, you know, cloud-based systems, using machine learning, and, and so on. Preach so, on. Preach on. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just fantastic. And the final thing I will say as well yeah. is just I can't end this without talking about the startup space. Oh, please do. We've seen tremendous growth in the tech entrepreneurship space in Africa. When I joined, there was, we've gone from zero unicorns to at least you know, four unicorns in Nigeria yeah. out of um, you know, almost 10 unicorns in the tech space, uh, tech startup space across Africa. And it's really great to see the level of activity and the investments that are being attracted into the ecosystem from a tech uh, uh, perspective. And uh, I'm really glad that some of the unicorns that we have today in Nigeria were part of our Google for Startups Accelerator program. Hey, there you go. That's a mentorship program that we ran, uh, we, that we, we, we've uh, been running on a year-on-year -year basis now for, for a while. And it includes mentorship, it, it includes funding, and just really support to help them you know, grow and scale their businesses. And so um, you know, when I look, look at uh, the 12 years, and even things like Google Maps, which I used yes, to get, to get here, here this morning. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, indeed. You know, part of that was, part of our work in the last decade was really localizing and updating that. Yes. So that, you know, now it's so great to see that most Nigerians use Google Maps even for traffic information, right, before they start their, their journeys. So that's part of the work that we've been able to do and uh, just localizing key products like, uh, you know, a localized YouTube uh, yeah, yeah. domain so that I, we can I don't, support. I don't know what life was like before Google Maps. I just, I don't even know, you know, it's just, it's part, so ubiquitous now, and part of everyday living. So you, you work, you know, country director for, for Nigeria and then country director for Western Africa. When, when you think about the whole digital uh, digitization of Africa, as far as the regions, should they foster competition to improve them or sh that is when i say regions i mean your north africa east west south yes. and so on or collaboration how, how do you think that you get you get there in, as far as digitization is concerned i would say suddenly collaboration ah okay yes africa is not a country yeah. right we, uh, and the different regions have some unique attributes but i think our similarities when we're thinking about digital growth yeah. and technology growth our similarities are more than our differences and, and so there's a lot of value to be gained by collaborating across the continent, you know, uh, across multiple countries in Africa. There are challenges around infrastructure, affordability and availability of reliable infrastructure. When you compare that to, you know, the average uh, income earning power of the average citizen, so that's one thing. There's a need for putting more localized content online. There's a need for skills development at scale. These are challenges that are common across you know, most of our countries in, in Africa. And so you know, fostering collaboration, and certainly th that's a key part of the, the work that uh, we've done in the last uh, uh, decade plus, uh, just really uh, f pushing a consistent strategy around Sub-Saharan Africa. And of course, the execution of that strategy would have local flavors. It would differ from country to country, but by and large, right, we're, we're working on the same big things. And earlier this month, no, this week, yeah, yeah. I was in Togo for Africa 50. I okay. spoke on a panel um, uh, with the Honorable Minister for ICT in Togo and a few other leaders within the private sector. The panel, the theme of the panel was connecting the next billion ah, in okay. Africa. So Big topic. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that's the sort of game we should be playing as a region. Yeah, yeah. And to do that, we need collaboration across multiple countries in the region to be able to, as a matter of urgency and at scale, provide opportunity for our young people. It's a predominantly young continent for our young people to be able to empower themselves and to be able to actively participate in the digital economy. Now, on that point, which comes first? You, your time at Google, you folks are the innovators coming into this space to expand, um, expand uh, digital transformation. But then you're going to meet whatever infrastructure is there, right? So wh what comes first when you think about this development? What, what would you rank? Would you rank the innovation that the private sector is bringing in or that government has a bigger role to play with providing the infrastructure that will support what you are doing? I mean, you've mentioned the Equiano cable and so on and so yes. forth. So, where do you rank? Where do you rank that? Yes, absolutely. So, if we were, I'll answer that question on two levels. So, first of all, if we were starting from uh, from ground zero, okay, of course, a lot of the focus has to be on infrastructure because that's the starting point. Yeah. For me to engage online, I need I need a device, right? Yeah. I need to be connected. So that's the starting point. However, for where we are now, the different pillars need to be invested in in parallel. Whilst we're putting a lot of focus on infrastructure, which is really important because prices still need to come down, you know, infrastructure expansion still needs to continue, including you know, access to rural areas, right? That's important. In parallel, you need to think about other elements of the digital ecosystem, like content, right? Making sure that there are use cases for people to engage, because that way you drive up demand for the infrastructure, which creates an incentive for private sector players to invest more right. in expanding their infrastructure. You also need to invest in skills development to make sure that people have the relevant skills to be able to take advantage of the tools and platforms, and therefore generate a lot more activity and uh, usage online. So these, all these pillars need to be spinning in parallel. Now to the question about public and private sector, Yes, the public sector have, has a very important role to play. Yep. I would say that that role is really around creating enabling policies to stimulate growth. The private sector does a great job of investing 
executing and running those projects, right? And so if we talk about infrastructure, for example, you know, across our countries, you have uh, issues like right-of-way issues, yeah. right? The cost of acquiring a right-of-way license. You have issues around, you know, multiple taxation at the federal and the state levels. Sometimes you have uh, issues around cable cuts during road constructions, right? So, you know, declaring uh, um, uh, technology infrastructure as critical national infrastructure, right? Ensuring that docks are created when roads are being constructed, those kinds of things. Um, uh, th those are policies that the government can just really create to, to enable growth, even access to spectrum, right? right? And, but I think in terms of the actual execution, the private sector does that best. Fantastic. Um, I, I don't know how time is running out already, but I, I have to ask you about the 30 Days of Excellence program. Can yes. you please talk about as far as you going forward now, what, what that's about? Yes, so that's one of my areas of focus going forward. I'm focusing on three things. I'll start with this one, which is around leadership and excellence development. Uh, so I published a book called 30 Days of Excellence okay. over a year ago. Yeah. And I have a program anchored on that book uh, called 30 Days of Excellence. It's a coaching program that is around personal growth and transformation. I'm very pleased that I've been able to roll out that program internally at Google. I've been rolling that out now for uh, almost 18 months, and that's continuing. Uh, you know, um, as, as we speak, but also I'm looking to expand that. Now that's important because when we talk about capacity building, yes, it's great for us to invest in, you know, digital tools and infrastructure, but we need to also think about the human infrastructure, human capacity, ensuring that, you know, we're driving excellence in, in thinking, right? Driving innovation, right? Uh, and, and making sure that we're bringing that excellence as we look at, you know, driving growth uh, in, uh, on the continent. The other two pillars uh, that I'm focusing on, one is around tech entrepreneurship. Amen. Right? Amen <laughs> Absolutely. To that. yeah. That's a very exciting space because yeah. entrepreneurship contributes to national growth, job creation, and so on. And we've seen the birth of unicorns. But for every unicorn, there are at least a thousand other companies yeah. in the same space doing great work, but are not getting the exposure right, and visibility to be able to attract funding and the support that they need. So through my Beyond Limits initiative, I'm looking to provide support to those entrepreneurs. Uh, we've had some cycles already, which have been very successful, and I've been amazed at the organizations that have come through. And that's going to be mentorship, it's going to be funding uh, and, and support. Uh, the third pillar, uh, and I would love to see, you know, I, I, I heard the Prime Minister of the UK speak at London Tech Week a few weeks ago, and he yeah. mentioned that in the last decade, we've had 200 unicorns created in the UK. Wow. Com compare that to a whole region, Africa, right. 1.2 billion people, where in the tech space in the last decade, we're talking about less than 20 unicorns. Right. Right. So I'd like to see us 10x, 20x that number. Yeah. And then finally, supporting businesses as they grapple with the, you know, with digital transformation, emerg emerging technologies like artificial intelligence, machine learning, what those mean for businesses as well as for growth on the continent. Dr. Juliet uh, Himwan, uh, incredible career, former West Africa director for Google. Please come back and talk to us about, you know, changes in the tech. So I want to keep up with what you're doing. Thank Sounds you so much. Good. Great stuff. Appreciate your time. Thank you.